Hey everybody, it's I Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone is doing well this weekend. So something has kind of come up here and this may make the scheduling of my videos a little bit erratic again. It's uh, more of a personal issue right now that I'm having to deal with. I've been dealing with it over the last 36 hours plus and until we get it resolved here things might be a little bit sketchy with the uh, times on the channel don't worry it's nothing too too serious it's just foolishness honestly don't really want to get into the details i'm not too pleased about it to say the least but that being said let's go ahead and get into what really was supposed to be yesterday's video and that was the seasonal outlook here as some of you may know meteorological spring not the official start of spring actually starts a little bit earlier than the uh equinox does so with that being said i think it's no better the time than the present to uh go ahead and discuss some of this so we're going to be looking all the way up from this month all the way uh, into july really at this point so we've already talked about how march would look but we're going to go over the three month averages over the next few months as well here one thing that's kind of limiting about this is the fact that I can't go over things on a month to month basis super in depth. So there's not going to be a considerable amount of confidence in this. This is just kind of a reach out into the long range. And as we get closer to these months, we'll get more in depth with each month as we draw within the proper time frame. But if we were to go ahead and look over the averages for the temperature over the next few months here, this is March through May. And remember, when we're looking at averages, it doesn't mean that every day is going to be like this. Just want to make sure I make that clear. The things that catch me the most is that at this point, it kind of looks like we're still looking at a relatively El Nino dominant pattern. We've been dealing with more of those warmer than average temperatures up towards the north. It's even reflected in Alaska at this point. As of right now, as far as the three month period is concerned, cool than average uh, probability over this period is relatively low. We're dealing with mostly equal chance there. But the point of interest that has really captured my eye here is more so towards the northeast with this uh, 60 to 70 percent area or northwest, I should say, excuse me. And but also let's not forget that uh, we have a uh, 50 to 60 percent area all the way through the northeast and into the Great Lakes. I've had some concerns about the Great Lakes for a while in regards to drought, but they've had a pretty uh, healthful a uh, pretty healthy winter when it comes to precipitation at the moment snowfalls might be a little bit down but we had a decent bit of rain as well in recent times so hopefully that that will uh that trend will be enough to kind of stave off the drought in the meantime so that's what we're looking at for the temperature outlook but the seasonal precipitation outlook i'm seeing a lot more activity off to the east as time goes on here I do anticipate maybe a uptrend here by the next update for this for maybe the central parts of the US because I do think as we shift from the El Nino pattern that we've been in for the last few months into a neutral Enzo, we're going to probably see more activity towards the central plains, maybe even an increase in severe weather. There's been a lot of speculation about that. And if we were to look at the yearly analogs, we'll see that being the case. But if we were to go ahead and take a look at the below average areas, these are this is kind of matching up with what I was talking about earlier with the northwest being a warmer than average area and pretty much at this point a drier than average area as well. Alaska, however, interestingly enough, has a couple of different spots where we have above average chances of precip here. They're not necessarily high confidence areas. It's about 40 to 50 percent at best, but still it's a better signal than what we're dealing with with the equal chances and it's covering about half the state so i do think that we may even see an increase in activity possibly towards canada it really just depends on how the jet stream pans out and then keep in mind like i said before this is looking at a 90 day period so not every day is going to be like this otherwise the probability of the uh, below normal or above average precip here would be more towards like 70 to 100 percent so always got to keep that in mind when it comes to the precip and the uh, temperature outlooks for the long range here whether it's one month or three but here is something to also pay attention to and it's the enzo probabilities right now as you know we're in an el nino it's 100 percent chance of that happening 
guaranteed. But look how quickly things change because these are the color codes right here. Red is El Nino, neutral Enzo is a whitish grayish color and blue is La Nina. But look what happens as we transition from March into May. Look at how that probability starts to drop and then the neutral Enzo starts to increase. By the time we get into April, May, and June, the probability of a neutral Enzo increases exponentially. We're almost at 80% at this point. And even if we were to go ahead and look beyond that point, and this is, this is another thing, like I said before, that kind of concerns me and a bunch of other um, weather enthusiasts, meteorologists alike, is the fact that we go from a neutral Enzo to a La Nina rather quickly. So we could have a pretty active back half of the tornado season here. I've seen a few analogs and a year in particular that stands out to me is 2010. Also 2016 and 2018, if I remember correctly, were also... Uh, El Nino to neutral Enzo years and it's and it, like I said the transition happened at a relatively rapid pace from what I'm seeing here not to mention it's not like this was a long lasting El Nino sometimes El Ninos can last up to about two years but it isn't always the case and sometimes during those years a lot of activity can happen with the weather especially on the severe side of things so like I said there's going to be plenty to keep an eye on as we go further into the spring in particular i think march right now could be somewhat quiet but this is just speculation on my part you never know what the jet stream is going to do you never know what the weather is going to do until it does it so that being said let's go ahead and get an idea at least of what's ahead here like i said we already went over march and we're expecting a relatively warmer than average month there's going to be a couple of sneaky little cold spells mainly towards the east and also one towards the southwest for a decent part of the month but that warm air is going to dominate from the looks of it through a good chunk of uh april here and really the most impressive uh warmer than average numbers aren't really going to come until about june i would say and even then that's going to be uh oriented more towards the south here but do notice though that as we go into May and into June, we do see a couple of blotches of below average temperatures here. It's not like it's gonna be a major departure, maybe 10 degrees or less. And this of course is very much prone to changing because we're looking 60 days plus in advance. But what I'm most interested in is what will be coming along with that cold air. And we'll kind of be able to see that a little bit more if we go to the height anomaly here. And this isn't going to be a great reflection of things, but sometimes every once in a while you'll see a little cheat code here whenever you see these little, um, this little blue area right here of cold air sneak in somehow or a gap like this. If you can see a gap like this and if you get a ripple in a jet stream, that can always be an indicator of potential for severe weather. Kind of hard to hash that out though, of course, like I said before, looking over a 30 day period at a time. So going to be a little tricky so like i said really the best way to try to forecast this will be to wait until we get into the monthly outlooks in the seasonal but i do anticipate as we get into june more ridging will come into play and if any troughs come in along to push that out of the way in the meantime i think we could get some big storm systems with that as well but looking at the uh temperature outlook and shifting over to the uh, precip outlook for the months ahead in April we're starting to see an increase of activity over towards the southern plains and the east starts to calm down a little bit the east has been really active over the winter and the early start early part of spring like the start of it I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised to see that continue but as we go further along here we're kind of going to be shifting a little bit but one constant that I've seen with this model run here is an increase of precipitation over towards the central plains again that's kind of going along with what the consensus has been with the thought of an increasing uh severe weather outlook for the central and southern plains here and that even trends into june here if we go into june here we can see the uh precipitation is remaining around this area even though some of the other areas like the northeast and deep south southeast are kind of a little bit more variable this is the one constant that i have definitely seen out of this entire uh spring stretch heading into summer so like i said 
Look out, Central Plains. You might need to be keeping an extra close eye on the weather this year. Could be a return to uh, prominence for traditional Tornado Alley and for Storm Chasers as well. So make sure you're staying safe out there if you are going to be chasing. So a couple more areas that I'm interested in looking at in particular will be the height anomaly. And this is actually going to be looking at some, uh, uh, some different oscillations here. Two particular oscillations that I'm watching are going to be the North Atlantic Oscillation and the Arctic Oscillation. The Arctic Oscillation, of course, is towards the Arctic Circle and over towards Greenland is another point of interest. Right now we're at a uh, clashing point right at the moment, see? So if we were to go ahead and look at this currently, and this is looking from March into April, and then we'll go beyond that point. You can see that right now we're in what's called a negative PNA setup, partially because we have a negative AO. A negative PNA setup is where it's cooler out to the west, warmer out to the east. And then you can see this little blue blob of uh, colder air here. This is uh, usually what will allow those cold blasts to push further off to the east. And we'll end up seeing a reflection of that as we go into the following week here towards the 16th. This will be the second week of the month. And then we start to see that shift occur where we're dealing with a positive NAO, North Atlantic Oscillations, warmer than average, basically. So this is kind of becoming a block for a uh, for additional cold air to come in. Eventually, we see that shift occur where we see almost a match between the two for a little bit here, where we're seeing a positive AO coming into play once again and seeing more cold air come over towards the southeast and the eastern half of the country as a whole here. Eventually, we start to go to a AO that's a little that actually ends up remaining negative here, which is interesting, and then a positive NAO here. So I think with this in play here and the potential for um, these air masses to shift, I do think the chance for severe weather may eventually start to rise as we head towards, let's say, mid-April in particular. And it really looks like it could lend itself more towards a Midwest and set up kind of furthering the hypothesis so to speak here that the general consensus has been talking about so that being said let's go ahead and finally take a look at the months ahead and we can see these blue blobs of cold air coming into play once again you can kind of see an average look of a negative AO so we'll still be able to get some of that cold air sneaking down from Canada which is going to be a key component to weather setups down the line here and then some extra cold air to come in from the Pacific. Between these two areas, this is what often is going to lead to some of what is likely will to be one of our severe weather setups. This is heading into May and then also into June. An interesting look here, even though this is a, a clear area where we have no anomaly. This is remember, this is over a 30 day average. So could we potentially see some activity towards the northeast for june not to get anyone's hopes up but that does kind of interest me a little bit in the long range here of course like i said we're looking almost 90 days out so this, is, this would be madman talk to think that maybe there's a chance of a setup here but we'll have to see how things play out from here that being said quick little rundown of what we can expect right now as we head to spring we'll really get more in depth as we get go from uh, month to month here at this point anyway though i appreciate you guys being here i appreciate the recent surge in activity i will do my best to deal with the situation at hand here the idiot that hit my car screw you <laughs> also i hope you guys have a good rest of your week and a good rest of your weekend Till then, take care. I'll see you soon. Weekly forecast will be tomorrow. That is a fact. Till then, Tired Metalhead Weatherman signing off. See you next time.